the, the support was never from my point of view. It was always based on medical staff or what they felt was needed and maybe fed to my parents about what I should have. So what would happen is I would have my... I'd go to hospital every month. My consultant would send a report down about what physio I would need. That report would then be sent to the physio department of my school, and that was how things would be tailored. A typical example of that, I used to wear something that was called a spacesuit. Um, it was an idea that was going to be used. I was hopefully, I don't know what happened, but <laughs> meant to be walking by now. <laughs> so I would be pumped up with air every morning. And zip, so, so first week, I'd be zipped up um, and then pumped with air. And I'd have to do 10 bars every morning. Back and forth, back and forth. So I'd do that till about, so I'd get in school, maybe half nine, do that to about maybe quarter past ten. And then I would have to, on a Zimmer frame, walk down to my classroom. And that wasn't walk, that was shuffling. Bear in mind, I haven't even got to my lessons yet. I was so tired. So I would stand in a space suit until lunchtime, maybe come out of the space suit just to go to the loo and maybe have my dinner and then get back into the space suit again till three o'clock. So that program was developed around what my consultant would have there because I was part of this program that they felt that uh, with, my, with my, my medical diagnosis would maybe possibly be able to walk and this was part of a whole experiment. So whatever my consultant had fed down to the school was what my, my the program was going to happen at school. So I was in, I had this from about, I think I got the space to about the age of six so about the age of six to about the age of 12, this programme, and would continue. Did your education ever take priority? Never. My education never took priority over physio. Physio was the main thing, um, part of my, part, part of my um, um, childhood. I always resented physio. I, I, I remember rebelling. Um, even in the six-week holidays, you had physio staff coming to your home so you never got away from it. <laughs> so the physio wasn't just part of the school. They would come o- over part of school holidays as well. At home, I was lucky I could rebel at home. So the space would be hidden in the cupboard until the physios came around. <laughs> so I was, I was lucky then. <laughs> Mum knew that I didn't really like it. Um, and I, I cried a lot because I, I hated it. And, and it was painful as well. Um, but I remember about the age of, I think I might have been about 12 when I was really just had, in, had enough of this. And I said, I don't want to use the space suit no more. I don't want to walk no more. I won't walk in anyway. This is not walking. This is, this, this is restricting me because I couldn't engage with anyone. Even at playtime, I'd just stand up against the wall because it would take me, um, maybe the length of this room, 20 minutes just to move across this room. Um, so in the end, I said, I don't want to do this no more. And I remember the physio saying to me, do you realise that by using the wheelchair, your body's going to become significantly deformed? Um, and I remember that, and you're going you're gonna to lose all your muscle power. Uh, and I just, I, I, I could hear things, but I can't remember anymore. And I was just like, well, life can't be worse than just standing still like a robot. <laughs> I'm, I'm not moving, so I'm, this, is, this isn't life to me anyway. And I remember going home to mum saying, I'm not walking, I don't do physio, and that's it. I want a chair, I want to be free. And, and that was the end of, I think it was, and I must have went to my consultant and said, I'm not being part of this programme no more, I hate it. Um, so it took me a number of years, so longer than I should have. Um, and I think once I got my chair, I felt so free, I forgot about physio. Um, 